Hi, my name is James Shepard with North American Bank Card. Uh, in the last video, we talked about building trust with the client so we can move towards the close. This is the last video I'm going to do on this subject. We are going to talk about how to close, how to use that trust that you've built up to generate a new account to get a new client. Um, I did a study uh, probably four or five years ago. I had a group of sales reps. Uh, we had about 25 uh, to 30 sales representatives. Um, and they were selling consumer services, and uh, I had to manage a team about 25 to 30. I did a very, very simple survey for about a month. I asked the sales reps one question. I asked them this, how many of the people you sold today gave you an initial negative response versus how many of them gave you an initial positive response? An initial positive response is a question. You go in and start talking to them, you introduce yourself, and they say, well, how much is it? Uh, tell me about your pricing structure. Um, when could you deliver? How do you do this? They ask a question. That is an initial positive response. That's somebody who's interested enough to ask a question. An initial negative response is an objection right off the bat. No, I'm not interested. Uh, no, you know what, I have somebody that does it and I really like them. Blah, blah, blah. They give you an initial negative response. I found that 80%, 80% of our sales, 80% at least, of our sales were coming from people who gave an initial positive response. And only 20% were coming from those people where they gave an initial objection. One of my big beliefs in sales, one of the reasons why so many sales reps have such a hard time selling is because they waste their time on the 20% rather than on the 80%. Most sales reps they get so good at dealing with people that give them an objection that they're shocked when they run across somebody who's actually interested and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to take someone that actually wants the service and walk them through the process of getting the service, of signing them up. They don't know how to go through the paperwork because they're so busy trying to learn that perfect line to tell somebody that they forget how to take care of somebody that actually wants the service. So rather, there's probably many of you watching this video that honestly, you're very good at turning a no into a yes. You walk into a business and they say, I'm not interested, I don't want to talk to you, get out of my place of business. Some of you, you could turn maybe, what, 10% of those around into a yes. That'd be pretty good, I think. You know how many of those I turn around into a yes? Zero. Um, I walk out the door, I say, hey, thanks for your time, hope you have a great day today, and I move on and I find somebody uh, who actually wants my business because that guy, if I try to turn him around, it'd take me a week. Uh, it'd take me hours and hours of time. I'm not willing to invest that time in that guy. It's not worth In the first video when I was talking about uh, closing the sale, um, I talked about two examples. One of them was a doctor. Being assumptive, I want you to think about being assumptive like a doctor. Um, a doctor doesn't come in after doing all this research and say, um, now I've done all this research and I think you need surgery, but you know, I'm not sure do you want to have surgery? What if a doctor said that to you? You'd be like, no, you don't know what you're doing. You're not confident. You're not assumptive. The doctor just walks in and says, very matter-of-factly, I've done the research. Here's the concern that we have. I went ahead and scheduled you for surgery. I need you to be here on Thursday at 8 a.m. to get the surgery done, right? That's what a doctor does because a doctor is assumptive. Based on everything he knows, he's the professional. He knows what's going on. He's assumptive. So, we're going to talk about how to go through the sales process, avoiding the no's, and getting to the yeses. Um, I know a lot of you have questions about the stuff I just talked about. Many people will totally disagree, and that's fine. If you disagree, just listen to the rest of this information. You can plug it into your sales process. I do think that it will really help you a great deal. First of all, ask ownership questions and porcupine questions. Uh, ownership questions, we talked about in the last video. Watch that video. Porcupine question, you can only use it really once maybe twice in a sales pitch. Porcupine question would be if someone said something like, um, Bob, if I signed up with you, would you be able to give me a free equipment? Well, if I was able to give you free equipment, would I be able to earn your business? Okay, you're asking them a porcupine question. You assume that you have the sale by saying, if I was able to do that for you, would I earn your business? That's a porcupine question, that's very assumptive. Next, uh, don't ask yes or no questions. Now, the porcupine question, that is the one exception to that. And you got to get pretty good at knowing exactly when to use that when you know you're going to get a yes from the client. 
any other time, don't ask yes or no questions. Too, much, too many times I talk to sales reps and they say, man, clients keep telling me no to this, no to that. How do I overcome that no? I'm not going to help you overcome a no. I'm going to help you avoid a no. If you're getting a no, it means you asked a yes or no question. Stop asking that question. Ask everything in a way that it's an alternate advance. It's a yes or yes question. Okay? Um, where would you like me to mail the statement? Here or to your accountant or to your home? Uh, mail it here. Did he say? Did he have the opportunity to say yes or no? No, you just asked him an alternate advance question. Okay? Um, we'll talk about when you get into the paperwork, but you always want to ask everything in your alternate advance. If you're getting a no, stop worrying about why the client told you no and how to overcome that objection. Instead, figure out how to rephrase that whole paragraph that you're using there, that whole statement, how to rephrase that so that they never have an opportunity to say no. Okay? Let them voice their concerns later. I'll give you the, the opportunity to do that later. You'll see that. But uh, don't, let, don't ask yes or no questions. Number three, when you get to the end of your sales pitch, I'm going to give you two questions, one of these two questions that you need to ask them, and then you're going to simply pull the paperwork out and start filling it out. <clears throat> I never close in the traditional way that people think of closing. I don't say, well, Mr. Jones, um, do I have your business today? Or are you going to start with me today? Any of those cheesy lines, you know, what Abraham Lincoln said, <laughs> I don't do any of that stuff, okay? Um, all I do is very simple. When I get to the end of the pitch, I say, uh, now, Bob, uh, what's the legal name of the business? Or I'll say, Bob, now is this business a sole proprietorship, is it a corporation, you know, what is it? I ask one of those two questions, very simple, unassuming question, not threatening at all. When they answer that question, as they're answering it, while they're talking, I pull the paperwork out of my folder, set it down, and I mark that on page one. When you start with North American Bank Card, there's three pages you have to fill out, page one, page nine, and page ten of the contract. We always call it the paperwork, not the contract. Customers don't like to sign contracts. They like to put their approval on the paperwork. Learn the right words to say it will help you a lot. Um, what you want to do is you want to pull out the paperwork. You fill out that part right at the top of page one. Then the next thing I do is I say, okay, Bob, let me show you the pricing again and go over this with you. Now, at that point, that's normally when I get my objections. I've already got page one with their name on it and the type of uh, business entity it is. Then I flip to page two. That's when they say, and I say, now let me go over the pricing with you real quick. Probably 50% of the time when I get to that spot, they just say, okay, and I go through the pricing with them and I sign them up. The other half of the time, they're going to say something like, now I am going to need a couple days to think about this, or you know, now I need to talk about this or that. Let them voice their concern. Don't push them into giving you an objection. Some sales reps, I listen to them, and it's like they're pitching to try to get the person to say no so that they can deal with the objection. Don't try to get the person to say no. Don't wait. Don't try to, oh, what is your objection? Why don't you want to do business with me? I don't care. I want to do business with you. If you have a problem with me or with my company or with my service, they'll let me know. They'll stop me, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm assuming that they're going to say yes, so I'm just going to go through the paperwork. If they sign it, they sign it. That's great. If they have an objection, they'll bring it up. This is usually when they bring it up. And if they do, you answer the objection, and then you continue to say, now, okay, great. Now, let me show you how this pricing works. I go through the pricing. Make sure you go step by step on the pricing, and you talk about every single thing that's on the pricing, even though some of the things don't apply to them. Um, I need to make another video that goes through page two of the contract, or page nine. Uh, with the pricing on it, and we'll we'll get to that. But just make sure you talk about everything on there. If you skip something, they're going to think, why did we skip that? It's, I'm signing something, and there's something on it. I don't know what the, what it is. So don't skip anything. Go through it all. Then I go back to page one. I continue to fill out the business stuff. I say, what's your mailing address? Where do you want the statement mailed to? All that stuff. I fill that out. Then I turn the contract around. I slide it over to them. On page one, there's two things that the customer has to fill out. On page one, uh, there's a section that's owner information. That's where they got to put their social security number, their personal address, their personal cell phone, and all that. Obviously, that's some sensitive information. So what I do is I turn the paperwork around, push it towards them. I take my pen, and I say, I'll, all I need you to fill out for me, Bob, is these two lines. And I point to those two lines right there. I set the pen down, and I immediately turn away, and I look at my schedule. I have my schedule with me. It's in the same folder where I have my paperwork for the client. And I immediately look over at my schedule and I start marking something down on my schedule. I'm waiting for them to fill it out. 
if you make eye contact with them at that point, you got a really good chance of them saying, uh, let me think about this a few days. Don't do that. Don't make eye contact. If you don't make eye contact at that point, they're going to feel awkward. They're going to have to get you to stop doing what you're doing in order to say, I don't want to continue. Just push the paperwork towards them, hand them the pen and say, I need you to fill out these two lines for me, and then you turn away and do something else. Once they're done with that, you look back and say, okay, I think we've got everything there, and I need you to initial here, initial here. Then when you flip to page, the last page, you want to go through and explain each section of the last page to them. Again, we'll do this in another video. I'll explain these. And then when you say, I need you to uh, put your approval, not sign, I need you to put your approval here and here, and you point to where they need to do that. You set the pen down. You look back at your schedule, work on something, give them some time. Sometimes they take a second. They want to look over the terms. That's fine and then they'll continue on, so be assumptive. <clears throat> All right, next. Um, uh, the next thing that you want to look at is you want to use your trust to schedule follow-up visits. Uh, that's another way that you want to use your trust. As you learned from the previous video how to build up trust, you want to use that trust, number one, to be very assumptive in your sales process. Go through the sales process and then start filling out the paperwork. Let them stop you. Next, <clears throat> you want to use your trust to schedule a follow-up. Um, if they say, I really need to think about it, to me that's a valid reason. I don't mind if someone says they need to think about it. Okay, That doesn't drive me nuts that they say I need to think about it. I don't have to pry into all their personal affairs and find out why. I really don't care. Rather than use my trust up to do that, I would rather use my trust that I have built up to say, okay, Tom, that's no problem at all. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to be back in the area on Thursday. How about I just swing by here on Thursday and see if you have any other questions for me? I shake my head yes. And they're going to say, okay, that's fine. When you come back to follow up with them, always have another reason why you're in the area and tell them that reason, even if you don't have one. You always want to tell them another reason that you're in the area because that makes it to where you don't put them on the spot. If you just walk back into their business and say, well, Tom, it's Thursday. You said to follow up with you. So what do you think? What did you just do right there? Number one, you gave them a chance to say no, which I never do. Number two, you put them completely on the spot and you used all of your trust in an all or nothing gamble. And they realize that right now they're going to have to say yes or no to you right now because you made a special trip out there just for them. They're going to have to say yes or no. I don't want to put the customer in that position. So what I say is, hey, Tom, how you doing? And you know, it's funny. I was just over at Bill's over here at such and such business. And I remembered that I was going to stop by here today. So I just thought I'd swing by and see if you had any other questions for me. You see how much more casual that is? When you do that, you're not giving them a chance to say no. You're just asking them if they have any other questions for you. They might say, oh, man, I totally forgot to look at that uh, estimate you gave me. Oh, no problem at all. How about I, I'll be back in the area, I'm sure, sometime next week, maybe Monday or Tuesday. I'll, I'll swing back by then. Okay, now you've used your trust for that. Swing back by Monday or Tuesday. Every time you come back, you are putting them more and more in your debt. They are going to have to say yes to you eventually because you keep coming back and you're being very nice about it. You always have another reason why you're in the area, but they know what's going on and they realize they're going to have to give you an answer here pretty soon. Uh, real quickly, the last one. I do use my trust to make sure they know I don't get into price wars. Never do I get into a price war. What I mean by that is, after I give them the estimate, if they say, Okay, James, well, I'm going to take this back to my current processor, you know, see what they can do, and then I'll get back to you. This is what I say. I say, man, you know what, Tom? I'll tell you something. I don't ever get into price wars. I understand if you want to do that, but here's the thing, Tom. That company, they've been overcharging you for however many years now that they've been doing this, and I want to make sure you understand I don't get into a price war because they realize now, say they've been charged, they've been marking you up 200 bucks a month for the last five years. Now, all of a sudden, you come to them and say, hey, this guy's got a better deal, and I'm only going to mark him up 25 bucks a month. So what you're doing, Tom, when you call them, you're giving them the chance where they realize either they're going to get nothing or they're going to get 25 bucks a month from you. So what are they going to do, Tom? They're going to take their price down to match mine. Is that really the type of company that you want to do business with, Tom? Your job is to get really good at selling people that are going to say yes. Don't worry about being an expert and overcoming objections like, well, actually, the guy that does my processing is my brother. Okay, you really think you're going to sell that guy? Who cares what the right response is to that objection? The right response, I can tell you, shake their hand and say, thanks, glad you do business with your brother, hope you have a great day today, and walk out and go find somebody that wants to do business with you. Don't waste your time with people that are going to 
take all your time and not give you any business. I hope that helped you a lot. My name is James Shepard. Click on the link below this video to go to my webpage.